thing, but it's super not Pythonic. And in fact, if you're going to do something with audio that's very aggressive or interesting or pushing things, you probably don't want to interact with your audio data this way because it's kind of a mess. So there are, so the, the uh, uh, back over here in my notes, uh, there's this thing called SciPy and NumPy. And, and NumPy is this effort to bring uh, the sort of array kind of things that you see in something like, say, MATLAB, that kind of functionality into, uh, into Python. And there's an extension for it that, that distributes with it uh, that's called AudioLab. And AudioLab does the kind of things that you would expect if you work with audio in a tool like MATLAB, where you can bring in a bunch of audio from disk, and then you see all the numbers, and you can act on them using uh, matrix mathematics uh, as discrete units. You know, you can do dot products and uh, transforms and, and all the sorts of things that typically happen with signal processing with audio very easily and in a way that makes sense. And when you investigate like this, you see actual numbers, right? So, so I highly encourage people to go that way, but for now we'll press on in this direction. Um, so, so, right, so, so just see that, realize it's frightening. If you really need to look at this data in the raw, you're, you don't want to use this package. Okay, so we have a second of, of audio. The second of audio sounds like this. If I play it, I will play it from the finder. Pardon me while I divert for a moment. Uh, so the audio we're playing... Unlike Greg, my directories are a mess. Um, so, so we're playing this song right here, and by song, I mean it's some noise. You hear it? It's noise, right? Well, it could be cage-inspired. Why not? Um, so, so we have five seconds of white noise. So what if, to just say something, so this, say that noise is it's too loud. I would like to reduce the volume. Okay, so... So rather than working on these numbers in, in the raw and just saying, you know, something like what we would guess if we'd done something audio data times 0 0.5 to, to, to have the amplitude, that doesn't work. It would be nice if it did. And in fact, some of the other ways of working with audio, that would produce a result. But in the sort of built-in stuff, it doesn't. So what you have to do is there's another built-in package that is designed for working with audio in this screwy sort of they're all unwrapped into strings thing. And it's called audio op which is a reasonable name, as in operations on audio, right? There's a similar one that's called image op that does raw image manipulation kind of stuff. So we import that one as well. So, and if we look at this, this is import help audio op. So audio op does some stuff. Uh, let me go down to the functions. Um, and so, so if we were going to, to take a, a signal of sound and make it smaller, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the whole signal by 0.5. Divide by 2, multiply by 0.5, right? Um, so there's this function called mole, and mole is the multiply function, yeah? So, and in fact, if we do help uh, mole, we get, right, so this is fun. So, so now these functions, for reasons that I hope are historic, don't really have very good inline documentation, so you have to go to the website. They used to. I'm surprised they don't. I'll have a word with somebody. If you know people, and you, I because, know people. because that would be great. Because uh, because blame is going to be run in about five minutes. <laughs> Email so, will fall. So, so because you see, because the thing is, there is documentation. So here we are at docs.python.org, which is where the Python documentation lives. And if we go to library slash audio op, uh, we see documentation for audio. Now, it should be where I just looked also, and it's not. Um, but so if we go down to the function I just looked, this is mole, it's in alphabetical order, there we go. So mole. So, so here we say mole, and it says fragment width factor. Okay, so, so fragment's pretty obvious. Fragment is the data that you're going to be, that's the audio data that we just had, right? That's that that's crazy string thing. Uh, width. So, so whenever you see width with this audio op package, that's the sample width, the bit depth. So 16-bit, so right? Now remember we're using bytes, so it's 2. Um, and actually, to be more generic, it's reader.sample width for whatever generated that audio data. Okay. And then the last one, factor. That's what we're multiplying by, right? So, so if we want to reduce things by half, then it would look like this. And that returns another one of those fun, crazy strings, right? So we'll, we'll say, uh, because that's what it is, right? So now, now, now if, we, if we look at the first 10, 
they're going to look just as strange. So that's the first 10 part pieces of that string, right? They're still, it's still gibberish. It's different gibberish than before, but it's still gibberish. So now, now what we probably want to do actually is listen to it. So there's no way to listen that's built in. You have to get other functions and that they're available. And if you're interested, we can talk about it afterwards. The easiest way to listen to this is going to be to write it back out to disk and then listen to it through the OS. So wave, in the same way that wave has read capability, has write capability. So we can do writer.wave. Sorry, equals wave dot open. So just like when you use open to read and write text files, you use open to read and write wave files. And then we can say, we'll call this quiet noise uh, dot wave. And we're going to open it in write mode. Um, so now we have a wave writer, right? But we can't just write the data, because that would be like far too simple. So what we have to do is, remember, when you have an audio file, you have the header, the stuff about the data, and the data. So you can do this, at, you, could, you could write the data and then write the header, but uh, things tend to break. The best way to do it is to write the header as best as you can guess in advance, and then write the data afterwards. Okay? So uh, this is kind of... Kind of uh, complicated and I'll just put the, so there are, th remember the three things we care about, right, are the sample rate, the bit depth, and the uh, uh, the number of channels, right? So, so th if you fill in those three things it can sort of guess all the rest in a way that's sensible. So we'll do those three things. Writer dot set so remember the reader had git the writer has set, right? And otherwise they're exactly the same so we say set uh, and it's and it's frame rate, and then it's going to be forty four one, and and then we can say writer dot set and channels, right? So so they're symmetrical, which is useful and good, right? So if we have a getter, when we have a reader, we have a setter, when we have a writer, uh, and the number of channels is two. Third one, I've forgotten again, sample width. Yes. Again, though, but, but remember, and I, 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 so if you have a bunch of data, right, and it's 44.1, but you say, actually, what I want to do is I want to downsample that, which is like a pretty common thing, right? Uh, the right way to downsample it is not to open a writer and change the, 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 the frame rate to 22050. Because what that'll do is it'll just mean that when something tries to play it back, it will play the samples that are at 44.1 at 2205, right? Um, and I mean, we can have an audio class about why that's bad, but it's bad, right? So there are other, and, and if, if these are things you want to do, we can talk, there are people have written things that do that the right way, and that, but they're third party libraries that you can download and add, and once you have them installed, they're very easy. Um, uh, so yeah, but so, because what you're doing is you're changing the information, or you're setting the information here that when someone wants to play this wave or interact with the wave file, this is how they know the statistics or the, the properties, right? So you really, you want to just sort of basically transcribe what you know, what you know about things. So, so the, I mean, the right way to do this is if you, if you're writing a function, right, then you would say, you know, let's, let's finish this yeah, yeah. and then come back. Okay. So, so, so you've done those three things, right? So then to write the data, then you just, so we have this data here. Uh, remember up here, this line? We made the noise quieter, yeah? So if that's what we want to stick in the file, we can do writer dot, I need to remind myself, I think it's just called something very sensible like write. Uh, so it's this one, write frames. We'll talk about the difference between frames and frames raw eventually, but for now it's just write frames, and then you put in that clump of, of raw data, right? So it's called quiet noise. Okay? So now, there's, so we'll, we'll close it. Always put away your toys, as we were told earlier. Oh, oh, kind of spelled right, though. Okay. So now if I go back to the directory I was in, we have this new wave file called quiet noise that wasn't there before that lasts one second, which is good because that's how much data we put in it, right? Uh, and if we play it, hopefully it will be quieter than the other one. Okay, so that's softer. 
Um, it's obvious from here. It's probably not so obvious 